Hello, welcome. This is Xi Wing Yi, and today's topic is a eagerly awaited video, and based on uh, based on uh, requests, based on a lot of requests. So uh, today's topic is pandemic boom towns, and I'm going to go over the housing market update using the Redfin data, and the topic is Boise. Las Vegas and Phoenix. This is the trifecta of the pandemic boom town to perhaps be, uh, to become a to a uh, post pandemic bust town. Well, let's go over the uh, this video and find out whether. So uh, is the demise of these three boom towns all greatly exaggerated or not? Well, again, we can do our best to find out. And toward the end of this video, hopefully you stay the, for the entire duration. Should not take more than 20 to 25 minutes to go over this three markets. And I will, as usual, I will provide my take my observations and my opinions and based on my 30 years of real estate investing experience in these markets over the years. All right, again, this is Xi Wing Yi. So without further ado, and I'm gonna, uh, let me share with you my objective, my, the outline of this video. I'm gonna go, go talk about Boise first, and then Las Vegas, then Phoenix. So, and the we can go over our, uh, seven different metrics with each of these three housing markets. And they are in chronological order, hopefully, using this Redfin data center, Redfin data. And the first one is uh, new listings. The second, uh, the second is active listings. The third metrics is pending sales. The fourth one is price drops. The fifth one is medium sales price. The sixth one is average sale to list ratio. And the seventh one is month of supply. All right, so uh, without further ado, before we begin, uh, just wanna share with you that uh, if you see value in this video, please smash the like button. Also subscribe to my YouTube channel if you have not already done so. And finally, sign up uh, below on my website, real estate investing website, to receive your free weekly newsletter if you want to become a free member of our real estate investing community. All right, so a lot of things to go over. So without further uh, ado, let me share my screen and let's start with Boise, Idaho. New listings, all right, the new listings as of October uh, the second. 2022 this year and uh, of course I have not uh, in advance to go over this this information so uh, I'm going over this just like you are and as you know about a uh, more than a month ago we I did this housing market update on these three markets so as you know things change very very fast in this very very challenging real estate market. All right, new listings in Boise City. Now, this is right off the bat, something very, very unique here, very interesting. New listings, uh, why? Why has the new listings has shot up from September the 4th for the past, well, actually for the past 30 days, from September 4th to October 20, the 2nd? All of a sudden, the new listings uh, from the peak of uh, uh, the the week ending June 26, we are uh, at this here, then it went, the new listings came all the way down until September, but for that 30 days, all the way, all the way down to 40% uh, year over year less uh, new listings than compared to 2021. As you can see, the black line is 2022 data. The orange line is 2021. The red line is 2020. And the blue line is 2019 before the pandemic. So how do you explain the skyrocketing of new listings 
in the past 30 days in Boise, Idaho, we're talking 40% rise in active uh, in new listings month over month, 40% uh, at, at here at, in September the 4th, they were 40% uh, year over year below 2021 listings. And then all of a sudden up here is we're up to 32, 32% more active list, new listings than 2021. So I don't have any to eternally tell why this certain sudden vertical jump in new listings in Boise, Idaho, but we will find out in the next few months. Uh, as we tour, heading toward the, the end of the year, bear in mind, due to seasonality of the housing market nationwide, the, uh, the real estate activity is usually slows down toward the last few months of the year due to the holidays, due to people are, are not putting emphasis and a priority around real estate transactions. So we can expect to see, uh, you know, we expect to see a less inventory coming to the market and less sales transaction. And uh, so just bear that in mind, plus the fact that we have it's around 7% more or less interest rate uh, hike at this moment, which is mind boggling and, and skyrocketing mortgage rate increases. So keep that in mind uh, as we move toward the end of 2022. So uh, yeah, this is very troubling uh, in terms of new listings. So let's look at active listing here. Uh, active listings uh, for Boise, Idaho and active listings from the beginning of the year, we have this, which is uh, after, after listings are, are below the 2021 level at the beginning of the year, and then has gone up pretty uh, pretty drastic in terms of uh, after listings. So more, more people are putting their houses in the market versus uh, the slowdown in demand due to the skyrocketing of the mortgage rates in the past few months is causing the after listings uh, to be uh, to have uh, reached at a very very high, to a point where right now, uh, October the second, the ending date, we have uh, year over year, three point seven percent more after listings than in twenty twenty one. Okay, so and then the next one would be let's go over the pending sales in Boise, Idaho. Uh, doesn't have, hmm, I don't know why they don't have the pending sales. So I suspect it'll be probably going to be lower. So uh, let's go over price drops. Very, very interesting. The price drop has been increasing very steadily uh, from the beginning of this year all the way towards, uh, all the way towards the uh, July, the week ending July 17th. We're talking 10% year over year. In, in in percent of active listings, the price drop is seventeen percent on a on a weekly basis up until July. If you calculate that by four weeks on a monthly price drop, so we're talking you know pretty drastic. But then the percent of active listings with price drops has decreased from July until uh, October, July of so the past few months the. The uh, percent of active listing with price drops has decreased. Well, we can only suspect, given this short-term data, that many of the sellers out there uh, uh, realize the reality of, of the market with the lowering of the demand, and they are uh, they are maybe they are selling realtors that they hire have uh, are doing the right thing, ethically speaking, and, and that they they are pricing their homes relative to market demand. So that's all we can say about that. So the price drop is not as great. So it has stabilized in the Boise market. We will see whether the other two market have similar trend momentarily. And then the fifth thing we're gonna go over is the medium sales price. So let's go over the medium sales price. Let's go over the past three and a half years before the pandemic in 2019. The medium sales price of a typical home in Boise, Idaho is 
of only $304,000. Now, let's go over the year-over-year -year housing appreciation from 2019 to 2020, or is 8%. From 2020 to 21, look at this. This is a historic in every sense of the word. From 2020 to 2021, we're talking 42% appreciation. This is beyond historic. This is insane. Then from 2021 to, 20, uh, to 2022, another 17% appreciation at the peak of May 29th, 2022, 546 million price, which is absolutely uh, amazing once in a lifetime historic appreciation growth during the pandemic. And then since May 29th, just keep that in mind, that the median sales price has been decreasing, okay? And to a point where uh, to, uh, right now, October, the end date, October the 2nd, the median sales price is 491. Thousand, so there's only like two percent year over year uh, appreciation from 2021 to 2022, whereas back in May 29th there was 17 percent appreciation increase from 2021 to 2022. So as a result, you build minus 546k at the peak price in May toward end of May, and then down to 491k. At October 2nd, we are seeing approximately $45,000 reduction in medium sales price in the past uh, few months, which equal to, if my math is correct, is 9% drop. 9% drop of medium home prices in the past May, June, July, August, September, around four, in the past four to five months. Just, just keep that in mind. And then, and then uh, let's go, go over the next uh, metric. Let's go over the average sale to list ratio. Average sale to list ratio. And we seeing that means uh, the month ending October 2nd, 2022, uh, uh, average sale to list ratio is 0.98%. This means that the, uh, the uh, the final sales price is 2% lower than the final asking price from the seller. Okay, so we're seeing the, the changing of the, of the dynamic of the market to be on a buyer side. Whereas during the peak of the activity before the sudden uh, mortgage rate height was uh, back in May, we are seeing like more, more app sales. I mean, they were seeing really multiple offers back in those days, right? Uh, now no more, no more multiple offers, no more bidding war. And finally, finally, month of supply is a very, very crucial metric because five to six months is, is a balanced market. And let's see what is the... Uh, the weeks of supply, which is 16.3 weeks of supply, you divide it by four weeks on a monthly basis, four divided by into 16 weeks. We're talking around four months supply of homes. So four months of supply of homes is less than five to six months on a balanced supply and demand marketplace. So I'm sure you agree with me right now, we're still a seller's market. Okay, so now people without any kind of scientific proof, a lot of people are saying that the Boise Idaho market is going to a crash. Well, based on this almost precise metric data from Redfin, I do not see a crash. The trend is the trend is not trending towards that way. It's, it's still a minor correction to the tune of 9% reduction of prices in the past four months. Again, uh, this is a, a short-term trend. We remain to be seen in the next few months, the rest of this year, and toward 2023 next year to see whether the trend is continuing with this price decline. 
All right, so quickly, let's, now we've done with Boise, Idaho, and let's go over Las Vegas, right? And Las Vegas, new listing price is, has been trending downward to a point where 24% uh, is less new listings year over year from 2021. So pretty dramatic decrease in new listings uh, from week ending July the 3rd. That's the time frame where the, uh, the rate hike has, has skyrocketed, right? From this year, so that's uh, no surprise there. And then now let's go over the uh, active listings. And the active listings has increased pretty dramatically, pretty typical in this market. The reason why the active listings has increased dramatically throughout the year is because the demand has subsided massively in the past four to five months. They have, they have, therefore, all these active listings are higher uh, be, uh, because there's, you know, there's not enough home buyers out there. So, and the active listing is, is still elevated at this time to the tune where 57% uh, more active listings in 2022 than in 2021, which is pretty big uh, difference, pretty big gap in the active listings. All right, and let's go over pending sales in the Las Vegas market. Pending sales has continued to decrease from the peak of uh, the May the, uh, the week ending May eighth of this year, and at at the, at the peak, the pending sales were ten percent, around ten percent less than the pending sales on a year to year basis from twenty twenty one, but now the pending sales on the week ending October the second is fifty percent lower year on a year to year basis from 2021. So half of the pending sales from last year. So again, it tells you that the sellers, uh, there are less sales transactions because the sellers are not putting up their homes on the market because many of the sellers are locked in at a very low interest rate. They have no motivation or incentive to move up to buy a new house at a higher cost or a much higher interest rate and Consequently, much, much higher mortgage payment if they would move up. So they are standing pat. Right. So then let's go with the price drops. Price dropping in Las Vegas. Again, the price drops has steadily increased from the beginning of the year all the way up to August the 7th. We're saving at 11%. Week to week price drop, we're talking 11% multiplied by a month, which is multiplied by four. We're talking almost like 44% uh, uh, of the of the initial list price by the seller. They have to drop their prices at least once, up and all the way up until August. Then all of a sudden, uh, the uh, I'm sorry, this is the percent of active listings. I'm sorry. Uh, what am I doing? Price, price drops, so sorry. How come they're not showing price drops? Anyway, oh yeah, that's right, price drop. So the price drops has stopped back in August. In fact, as a matter of fact, it has decreased from August to September uh, a little bit. They said the active listings it will, it will price drop. So these the sellers are pretty much getting the memo, if you will. And not all of them, but many of them, many of the sellers are getting the memo that the demand has subsided. So they have to lower their expectation in terms of uh, what price to list their homes uh, as opposed to what happened prior you know, to this year. And then we're at a point where right now the percent of active listings with price drops are on a weekly basis, in the past uh, is ten percent. If you quantify that in a monthly basis, it's like forty percent. So price drops are getting less and less. Uh, so the sellers are becoming realistic in terms of, in terms of their 
list prices. And then uh, let's go over the medium sales price, which is very important here in Las Vegas. In at the peak of this year, 2022, the medium sales price uh, ending date of June the 19th, the medium price is 455,000, which is a whopping 24% year over year appreciation from 2021. You can see the huge gap, huge equity growth. In fact, if you start from 2019, the medium price of a home before the pandemic was only 284K. Uh, and then 2020, it was increased by 6% when the pandemic began in 2020. And the medium price was 306, then skyrocketed from 306 to, to 2021 to 366K, which is 20% appreciation year over year. Then from 2021 to the peak of 2022, in June the 19th, another 24%, which is you know, very historic skyrocketing of home price increases. But then since June the 19th, the median price has steadily decreased, whereby at this time, dated October the 2nd, the median price is 420K. So therefore, the increase in home prices from 2021 to 2022, year over year, October, is only 11% as opposed to 24% a few months back. So we've seen a decrease of medium sales price in the past few months of from 455k at the peak to 429k currently in October, a decrease of 9% of, of, of prices and which is $35,000 decrease in, in, in medium home prices in the past few months, which is equate to, I believe, 9% reduction of prices. And then finally, the uh, let's go over the average sale to list price ratio, wow, wow, which is amazing. So this means that the buyer are able to uh, to purchase a price at 3%, which is 0.97% average sale to list price. The buyer are able to uh, negotiate for 3% lower final purchase price from uh, the sellers asking Price. So is the pendulum has swung back to the buyers. The buyers have more negotiation tire, uh, power, whereby back at the peak, the average sale price to list ratio back in May the 8th was uh, 0.01, almost 2%. At that time, there were still bidding wars and multiple offers in the Las Vegas market where the sellers are able to, uh, to uh, sell their homes at almost 2% above list price. So things have drastically changed for obvious reasons. And the last metric is month of supply, which is very, very important. The month of supply has dramatically increased, again, based on the, uh, <clears throat> the uh, uh, demand drastically in, uh, decreasing as a result of the rate hike. and uh, you still have uh, homes to fail, for sale. So therefore, look at this. I'm seeing this for the first time, just like the rest of you. The weaker supply in the Las Vegas market from a high level, the weaker supply is 22 months. So four weeks on a monthly basis divided into 22. We're talking almost five and a half months supply of inventory. So class, what does that mean? I just told you five to six months is a balanced market whereby the supply and demand is almost at equilibrium. And in this case, we are at a little bit more than five months of supply here in the Las Vegas, the Las Vegas market. So we, are, we have reached a balanced market here in Las Vegas, All right? as of October 22nd, uh, okay, in terms of inventory availability, availability. So the big observation I have here in Las Vegas market, again, there are, I do not see a crash anytime soon. 
uh, based on current situation, and the price has only decreased, only decreased 9%. So there's no doing in Las Vegas, at least not just yet. <laughs> okay. Right. So, and finally, <clears throat> the last market we can talk about is Phoenix, Arizona, because these top three markets are really the pandemic boom town. Pandemic boom town are becoming post pandemic bust town. Not just yet. There's no need to uh, overanalyze. There's no need to jump in conclusions. There's no need to uh, act irresponsibly. Uh, the data still have not shown such. So let's go over. Thank you for your time to continue to watch this video. This is a very critical data. And this is a, a lot of you out there nationwide are very much interested in this three markets for obvious reasons. So new listings in Phoenix, Arizona, as you can see right here, the black line, the new listings have decreased ever since the peak of June of this year. That uh, from, from June all the way to October, uh, the new listing have decreased 20% year over year from 2021, which is the orange line. So, which is not surprising, new listings because the sellers are not putting their house for sale. They are having, they have achieved, many of them, substantial equity of their homes and a very, very low, historic low mortgage rate of more than half of the mortgages out there are less than 4% 30 year fixed rate mortgage. So the sellers are staying put. So new listings are, are getting less and less. And then let's look at the uh, act of listings. Uh, wait a minute, what did I do? Oh, I need to go back to Phoenix. Uh, excuse me, I, I got out of the Phoenix uh, category. Let me get back. Sorry for this slight delay. Okay, so we let's go back to the uh, active listing. Active listing here, which we did run over. So then let's look at pending sales in the Phoenix market. Pending sales has decreasing ever since back in April. So uh, there's less and less pending sales transaction to a point where uh, the pending sales uh, during October 22 is 991 sales transactions pending, which is a 45, 46% decrease in pending sales year over year from 2022, from 2021. So uh, a lot less sales for the reasons I just stated over over and over again. So pending sales, so let's look at the price drops in the Phoenix Arizona market. The price drops uh, are not subsiding, has slightly increased the last few months. It had a dip uh, toward September, and then October, last few weeks, has the, uh, the after listing, so the price, with price drops has, uh, has been elevated all the way to 14% again on a weekly basis. So multiply by four, we're talking almost, you know, 60, 70%, 70% of the sellers are still listing their prices higher than what the market demands in a Phoenix market. So yeah, you can make the argument the sellers are still not getting the memo five months into the, uh, uh, the, the demand uh, subsiding. Okay, so remains to be seen. That's very interesting. And then let's, uh, did I go over the median sales price perhaps, which is very critical. Now, this is a very critical metric to determine whether this market is crashing, a bubbling or a, a slight correction. Uh, so I know there's a lot of opinions out there by a lot of amateur economics, if you will, uh, about the doom and gloom scenario with some of these markets, but this data will hopefully will validate 
a lot of your beliefs and emotions out there. <laughs> so let's, let's take a step back and let's look at the scientific data, if you will. So at the peak, the Phoenix area market back in June of this year, the median sales price was 486, which is a 20% appreci uh, price increase appreciation year over year from 2021. In fact, let's go over 2019 uh, before the pandemic. The medium sales price in Phoenix was only 283k. Then, uh, from 2019 to 2020, when the pandemic began, it has increased by 8% appreciation to 306 medium price. Then, skyrocketed from 2020 to 2021 in June to 31% uh, skyrocketing of appreciation uh, to 404. This is Shocking, amazing, historic, uh, insane, whatever definition you come up with. And then furthermore, from 2021 to 2022, the theme market increased another whopping 21% appreciation. We're talking from median price of 282, only about three years, two and a half years ago, 282 median price, all the way to the $485,000 median price which is amazing appreciation in the Phoenix market, which is not sustainable, obviously. So now we're seeing the, uh, the peak back in June of 485K. Since June, up until October the 2nd, the median price it has lowered to 450K, which is, if you look at the year over year, October 2021 to October 2022, uh, your, uh, 8%, appreciation as opposed to back in June, 22% appreciation. See the gap has decreased. So the reduction of price from 486 back in June to 450, we're talking a decrease of price of approximately $36,000 decrease in medium sales price in past few months. So which equate to 9% drop in prices in the past four to five months. So the Phoenix market, uh, so do you agree with me that uh, you know, I, I do not see a crash, and, uh, I do not see a bubble. I, so far it's less than a double digit uh, decrease in home prices in the past four months. So uh, then uh, let's go over the average sale to list ratio, average sale to list ratio. Obviously, no surprise there. And the uh, the buyers are able to negotiate for for three percent uh, final uh, purchase price relative to the final asking price by the seller. Whereas back at the peak, the average sales to list ratio back in May of this year, the the seller had the advantage at, to the tune of two percent of our actual sales price from the final asking price. So the pendulum has shifted. And last but not least, the last, the seventh and the final most important metric is the month of supply in the Phoenix market. It will determine whether this is a seller's market or buyer's market. And the answer is the drum roll please. Weeks of supply is 17 months. So four divided by 17 months, we're talking a little bit more than four months supply of inventory. So once again, the benchmark is for balanced market, whereby demand equals supply is around five to six months. We are reaching a little bit more than four months of supply of inventory, still a slight seller's market, and um, we're going to be seen afterwards. All right, so. I think that's pretty much sums up the three markets. My takeaway, my observation, my experience is that uh, again, the, the, the next, the last three months of this of this year is is going to be important because the seven percent interest rate at this moment, if the interest rate stays the same, I we all expect to see uh, less inventory in the market, less homes being sold. Less buyer demand because the affordability factor is escalating. Uh, so if we are at a standstill, we are at a, uh, uh, you know, 
I don't know how else you can call it. So sellers are not selling, buyers are not buying based on very high interest rate, uh, at least uh, from, uh, from the recent past. So again, no crash, not just yet, assuming the job market stay, still stays strong, even with a slight recession that are impending, uh, things are still uh, very much a, uh, because of the low inventory, okay? We are seeing right now the nationwide inventory is probably a little bit less than 3%. Uh, three months of uh, inventory, I'm sorry, three months of inventory. So because of that, because of the low inventory and moderate demand, uh, still uh, a pretty pretty good market for, for some people. So that's all I have to say. Thank you so much. Uh, and again, if, uh, if you see value in this video, please smash the like button and also subscribe to my channel. And also finally, uh, Please, uh, at the my website below, please, if you want to, put down uh, sign up for our newsletter with your email so you can become a free member of our real estate community so you can receive free real estate investing information coming to your email box on a weekly basis so, uh, so you can um, look into real estate investing. Thank you so much and, uh, for watching. And to see you and ye, I will see you on the next video on a weekly basis. Thank you so much. Have a nice day. Bye-bye.